Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My, uh, my name uh, is uh, William G. Lathan. I am my great grandparents, as a, my great grandfather was a Muskegon, uh, but his real name was uh, Joseph, Joseph Lathen. And then uh, my grandfather, my Norman, and then my dad, George, uh, that, that's my, my line. line. It's, I, uh, you know, my, my, I don't usually say my street name, but I have two names. One is Gani Poite Temasko, and the other one is uh, Pisimunapio. I lived in a community since I was a child. Uh, I lived with my great grandparents, my grandfather were first, and then my grandmother. And uh, they taught me the language and, and, and a way to live, and a way to live. And uh, you know, uh, and uh, my language was uh, very important. We lived in, uh, in 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 peace and harmony. There was no chaos or nothing. Everything was done in order. In, in order. Eh? And uh, you did not see, I did not see any like uh, rolling blankets or uh, furniture or stuff like that. Uh, all I saw was bare floors and my blankets were made out of uh, fur, hide and so on. Yeah? And uh, even my, my, I remember my socks were made out of uh, rapid fur. <laughs> you know? And all my clothes were uh, homemade. You couldn't couldn't find him in the store, but that's uh, you know I and, and my background as uh, my, I guess my education, growing up as a as a young fella, I, I went to a day school, and then I was sent to a residential school, and uh, I didn't I didn't speak a word of English, and uh, I was uh, damaged there physically, my hearing is gone and so on, and I have a hard time hearing in my ear, but then I. Uh, I came back to the reserve by uh, my, my, my family, the separation. The separation of families was very devastating. I couldn't get back, couldn't get back into my, my family again. My family, had, uh, there was this connection. Eh? It was very hard, but then going through all that process, I, 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 I learned to survive. And I, you know, my work ethic had always been, you know, I was taught very early that if you work, you had to go out and get your food out in the wild, there was no such thing as stores that you could run to to buy, buy food, you know, all, all your food was in the wild, the fish, the animals and the plant life and so on. So that I, I learned all that. I was taught by my grandparents to, to you know, but then the living part, uh, it was missing. Eh? But my, my, uh, my relatives were all scattered and so on at the time, living in a reservation. So that's, but I, through that course, I, uh, I went to uh, Prince Albert. I got a great seven academic education. And then I uh, raised, uh, you know, I got married. Uh, as you can see in the background, that's just my former wife in the picture there. It's like two years ago. We raised five children and, uh, and uh, we managed to survive. But then I had to go back to school to get an academic standing of uh, grade 10. And I became a millwright. I became a, a mechanic. You know, I learned about electricity and all that stuff and so on. And so I become a jack of all trades, but master of none. But during the course of raising my family, I, uh, I, uh, you know, again, I served the community in, um, in 1970s and, uh, when uh, we were allowed to vote and, uh, and then we kicked the Indian agent out. <laughs> you know, that's when we started to pick up, you know, we started to, to, to sort of control our own community, who came in, who came out. Before that, the Indian agents and rural community, you had total control. You could put people in jail. For instance, if you didn't send your kids out to residential school, you could throw you in jail and stuff like that. You know, and also for stealing and doing all kinds of stuff. You ironing up, you know, people end up in jail because the Indian agents, uh, you know, press charges against them, against our people. But anyway, and then these things started to build up uh, in the reserve and then. Uh, I served as a counselor for 26 years, and uh, the last two years, I people elected me as chief. You know, and and, and I worked in an apartment, and, uh, 
for many years. And again, that was a very harsh environment for being the only Aboriginal tradesperson in a in a white environment. Uh, you know, it's very hard. I, I didn't know about racism at the time. I I've been involved in uh, in, in many organizations uh, dealing with uh, children, women, and uh, old people. Uh, you know, that that's been my uh, but my main goal is to preserve the language. And uh, in the early years, uh, we, we managed to get a, a school building a community because uh, when they went to the other side, on the town side, they didn't have any graduates. But as soon as we got our own school and our own people in the school, we had a lot of graduates coming out of you know, the academics, uh, academically, great pass and great talk. But anyway, that's, you know, that's the rest is history. We started to build up and, um, you know, the mall, the building of the mall, all these uh, infrastructure, the, the institutions that we have, the mall, the schools, and all and the care room, and all the buildings. I was involved in in, in, in that process, but uh, the sacrifices that you you know that you make, you know, I didn't know that uh, you know I was I, my family suffered, but I was never home. I was at meetings or go or work, stuff like that. Too. But those are the things that I. Uh, but I did, uh, you know, I'm still, still at it today, trying to pass on the knowledge and the wisdom and whatever the elders gave me and, and my relatives. So that's what I'm, I learned from the universe. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I watched the, the, the plant life, the animal life, and, and, and the way things, are, you know, the seasons. I, le I learned from those and I, and I watched that. Eh? But my language is uh, very important to me. and. So that that's uh, basically, I guess, uh, you know, I I've lived uh, I've lived uh, 80, 80 winters. This is my eight, 80th winter in in this in this world. I'm grateful for all the people that have provided me knowledge and the wisdom, and I thank them. Uh, the, the treaty, I guess, was signed in uh, in Barents River, and then the extension. The addition uh, was signed in um, Grand Rapids, and then, but uh, it, it came up river because uh, at that time the only way to travel was by canoe and uh, by boat, eh? or I don't know if they had, yeah, I think they were at uh, steamboats at the time, but uh, that, that's the way the word came out. And, but we had our own communication system. Our own communication system was called something called the South Atsigan, and people. Uh, call it uh, the shaking tent, but it's not a shaking tent. It was a communication tool used by, uh, you know, the tribe. Well, I think all the tribes in North America uh, used that system. There were people that were able to to talk to one another and visit one another in, in these uh, people called shaking tents, eh? and uh, also to look look in the past and the future. So those those kind of things were there, but. Uh, <clears throat> You know, before treaty, uh, uh, our people were uh, dependent on, 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 on the animals and it all depend also on the seasons. Eh? The seasons uh, provided uh, where, where we need to be and where we, we had to go. Eh? It was in different places, say in the lakes or creeks or whatever. Wherever game was plentiful, eh? like the, the moose season, the, you know, the, the, right now it's a muskrat season and the, and, uh, and, uh, and the birds are coming from the south and so on. So you had to know where these places were and they had names for these places. You know, we had names in, in our language long before uh, they, they were, you know, uh, translated into English. Uh, they have English name now. That's a river, Kewara Lake, Cedar Lake, and all those. Cedar Lake, uh, you know, we, 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 had, we had a name for that. Eh? Or, uh, you know, uh, same thing, um, you know, our people call, uh, you know, Mr. Powis, it's uh, Grand Rapids, Clearwater uh, Lake, uh, you know, Wasegami, uh, Rogue Lake, uh, you know, uh, Maganagak, and stuff like that. My, my experience as a young, young, young child, going from place to place, different seasons. In the springtime, we were in a different place. In the summertime, we sort of came to the main camp, Pasqua, and also to the, um, in the wintertime, we went to, the, you know, in, in, in another place, uh, you know, in a, uh, for the, for the winter, eh? and in the winter uh, we had to build a little little cabins. Eh? As a child, I used to go with my uncle and we build these cabins, 
and we dig about two feet into the ground. I don't know, I don't understand why you dig two feet into the ground and then you build up the walls and everything. So, you know, all these cabins that we built, that was, you know, be our winter camp. Eh? But that's uh, in, in a treaty five area that, uh, you know, this, I'm talking about this as in the Saskatchewan River, um, all our relatives um, were, were in that, uh, you know, from the Fort La Corn. We call Fort La Corn in Tagitsigansi, and Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, uh, Red Earth, uh, Nuskil, Show Lake, and all our relatives were, were in the Saskatchewan River system. And the reason I mentioned this is because my mother, she was very instrumental in telling me all my relatives were on her side of the family. She said, these, these are my relatives. And uh, these are relatives on your side. And I couldn't understand why. And, you know, I, as a young man, as a child growing up, I was maybe five, six or seven years old, eight years old. And she built that uh, relationship thing into me. Eh? And that's where I uh, began to understand that we, we are all connected. Eh? We're all connected to, to, you know, the animals, the planet, everything. You know, everything is connected. But at that time, I didn't think too much about it. The Treaty 5 area is in addition to from what was signed at uh, Baron Silver in, uh, in 1871. So, so um, uh, and, and the elders, uh, they used to go with me. I, I was the only child of 20, when, when they went out, when they went out on hunting trips and, uh, you know, and I was I always wondered why. And, and then they, 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 they educate me. They said, you know, these are the promises that were made by the Itogamashko, which means, you know, the queen, the queen mother, he made, made these promises. And they said, what's written is different than what, what, what we're saying. And they also, they talk about the little black book. That little black book uh, sort of disappeared after we get the Indian Asian I haven't seen it, but, uh, you know, that's what they used to talk about, yeah. And I, and I always wondered what, what was in the, in that little black book. But of course, uh, Indian Affairs probably has it hidden somewhere. I didn't want us to see it. But, that, you know, that's, that's, uh, that, that, that's, that's what I know, uh, you know, the treaty. And, and, it, and, and, and the five dollars you used to get, you know, they, you know, you know, they used to, um, on a, around, around about this time in May, they, they'd have uh, something called treaty day where people would come together and have a feast and kids would play and so on. And then they uh, brought something else. They brought uh, the X-ray machine. Yeah? The X-ray machine, in order for you to get $5, you had to get your, your family, whole family X-ray. And I don't know what, uh, you know, I, I always thought that was a, wasn't, a, it wasn't normal. It's like you were, Forcing people to come and get an extra without, without, uh, you know, or they were forcing people, and, and then, you know, the, the, the whole family get extra and all that, eh? and that's uh, they didn't like that uh, after. And then about a month later, uh, my family would be sitting around crying, crying, and I was wondering why they were crying for, and uh, and they said, you know, pretty soon people will come around and be picked up because they found something on the x-ray. And I went, why, why is that? I guess there was a, something called tuberculosis at that time. It was going around and, and they had a sanatorium. And in the sanatorium there, they, uh, <clears throat> they, um, they, they kept you there. And, and, uh, but I heard uh, bad stories about those sanatoriums. The workers there uh, said that uh, People would come in, especially the Indian people would come in and they were very sick and they were given uh, some kind of a needle. And when they were given that needle, they, they, were, they didn't survive. But, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, trying to get medical records, uh, I mean, the late Francis Flett, we were, we were shut down. Uh, it, took, it took two years for the province to, to uh, say that you cannot access medical records unless you're uh, individual. Eh? Like me, I have to, you know, if I want my medical records, I have to go and ask for them. But in this case, you know, uh, and, the, and the things that the government has done to us, is, uh, you know, they're, they're hiding stuff from us. Eh? And that's, that's what we were trying to get at. So anyway, you can't get access medical records to our own people, how they were treated in, in, in a sanatorium and stuff like that. 
And the reason I say this is it, uh, it affected me, you know, seeing my family crying and, and, and trying to understand why they were, they were, they were crying because uh, some of their relatives would, would be gone and then they'd be, uh, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't come back to community alive. So that, that I guess that's, that's the reason why they, they were crying. So, but uh, as far as the, the five dollars, uh, that uh, you know, it, that five dollars used at the time, you know, it, it was worth uh, you know five dollars. You would get a lot of stuff, but today I don't think you can even buy a bubble gum with five dollars. <laughs> so, you know, the value of that uh, money and, and that that money is uh, you know the the, the, the annuity and they, they talk about uh, you know Indian money. Indian other other money that the government is supposed to collect for or the Indian agent that you know that's supposed to be sitting in Ottawa and I and I've always wondered what what happened to that money you know what happened to that, that money that we're supposed to be kept in trust for us by Department of Indian Affairs so but anyway that's uh, <clears throat> you know I'm talking about the, the Treaty Five area and of course uh, you know the medical <clears throat> the medical things that we had, we used, we used to get uh, medical supplies. Uh, you know, today uh, you have to buy medical supplies. You have to get your, you know, you have to pay for your your anything to do with medical. You have to pay for it yourself. Some of them are still, you know, looked after by the government. But in the treaties, uh, it says that uh, all these things are supposed to be taken care of because uh, you know the in exchange for allowing our the people to come and live in our land. So they don't own the land, but they think they, they own the land. In our in our in our in our uh, beliefs and our values, we, we cannot own the land. Because the land owns us. And that is why we call it Mother Earth. It takes care of us. You can't you can't buy and sell your mother if you're if you're if you're a person that you know that uh, that knows who you are. But uh, again, these people that came, they have different values and different beliefs. So, you know, what, what do you do? You just, you just have to try and convince them that, uh, you know, what, what, what your beliefs and values are. And, and, and uh, it was supposed to be, be you know, was us working together with the newcomers. And the only thing that they mentioned was six, six fingers. Eh? Six fingers means six inches of, six inches of the top topsoil. That, that was all. That was all I was uh, given to, to the people to make their living on. Eh? They weren't given access to the minerals and stuff like that. Eh? Even to the water. They were not given the water. You know, the water, um, to, but that, 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 was, that was passed on to me by, by my, uh, my, my family and, and the elders and the old people that uh, talked to me about treaties. And they call him the Sitamago in here. The promises. So we're not done yet. So we need to get educate our young people because our young people don't know so much about the treaties because they're sort of been put in the back burner. But to me, they're, they're sacred documents that were signed by our, our ancestors and, 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 and the ancestors of the, the current uh, governments that are in, you know, uh, on behalf of the crown. You know, the crown is the one who signed the treaty, it wasn't the province. So those treaties are very important. Uh, and, and the agreements that were made on both sides have to be kept. And these were done with sacred documents, you know, that, that they, they believe in. They, they have this thing called the Bible. And that Bible is uh, full of truth, but people twist it around to manipulate it to their own, you know, just to, to justify what, what they're doing. In our case, we used to fight on, 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 on our medicines and on, on our ceremonies to justify, you know, that this agreement is sacred, you know, and, um, and, uh, and our, our bundles, our bundles were there and to, to, to say that, you know, this is a sacred document and we should not uh, be falling around with, with it because it involves the lives of many people. And that, that's what I'm trying to promote. I'm trying to promote what what are the original intent of the treaty is to live in peace and harmony with with our neighbors and with uh, look after the environment 
you know, the water and the air and all that and all that we need, all, all those we need to live on. Right? We need to, we need air, we need water, we need clean water, we need, uh, you know, our soil. We don't know, we do not want, we don't. But what happens is the, the, the soil is contaminated, the, the water is polluted, same thing with the air, and, and it's making us sick. It's the pollution, because uh, anything that's man-made, whether it's a, it's a vaccine or medicine, you know, it, it, it doesn't have that, uh, that light that uh, the plant life has. The plant life has intelligence and the plant life has life. And that is why we, we, we try and protect, you know, the forest. Because we, we recognize that that light came into that plant to it's wrapped around inside it, you know. But these these medicines that uh, the scientists are developing and the vaccines, they're man-made. We, we don't know what's in them, you know. So how that how that gonna affect uh, you know as far as making people well or making people sick, uh, you know. There's a, there's there's a cure and a, and a medicine that that can be made for the plant that can cure all diseases. You know that that's that's just my my belief, and uh, yeah, I was told by by the people that uh, that are a lot a lot older than me and have more intelligence with with, with, with you know about the plant life and know more of the environment than than, than I am. Because me, I'm, I'm just uh, although I'm like I said, I, I am 80, 80 winters old. I still don't know very much. I'm just beginning to learn, you know, beginning to learn all these things at that age. So, so we educate our children and our grandchildren and also the general public that we have to take care of the environment because if we don't take care of the environment, none of us are going to be left to live the live uh, the life we're living you know we're all going to be sick because our our, our culture is about relationships eh? it has to, it has nothing to do with uh, you know the corp the other side is the corporate eh? the corporate structure Canada Canada is a corporate uh, you know a corporate uh, corporate state, it's, it's not a sovereign state. Because in order for you to become a citizen, you have to become a cor you have to be incorporated. You know, and in, to be incorporated means you can be bought and sold. You become a commodity. And that's where I have a problem when you, when you talk about, uh, you know, uh, me becoming a citizen. I, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be bought and sold because I am a human being. I'm a, you know, I'm a being. <laughs> you, you can't sell being because when you when you think about it like that, it, you know, it, it, you, the first thing that came to mind is slaves. You know, become slaves of uh, something. Eh? So, but the relationship part, you know, is very important uh, in our culture because without that, uh, our great grandparents and our grandparents and our parents, and we're in the middle, and we need to pass on what we know and what our grandparents and our parents and our great grandparents taught us. And also, you know, we were, if we're in the middle, then we have to teach our children and our grandchildren and great grandchildren what, what our, our ancestors taught us about life. Because there's another side to education. It's about life, living the good life called Minup Matisane. You know, and that's where all our teachings come in. You know, we have to educate ourselves and who we are as a people. And to me, to find out who I am was uh, was the key. If I find out that I'm not my name, I'm not my identity. You know, I am not what I do. I although I uh, you know I'm a mechanic by trade. I was a counselor. I, you know, I, uh, right now I'm, I find out that I'm just uh, I am. That, that's, you know, I, that's what I'm, I, I am. Although I have all these titles and and uh, everything else, what other people call me. Some people call me choice names, but no one who mentioned me here. <laughs> so, but for me, uh, life, life is, uh, is very good. It's been very, uh, very good to me. And the lessons that I learned 
I try and use those to pass them on to the next generation so that they can, that they can, you know, they can, so they can help them to go, to go through the trials and tribulations that they have in, in, in their own way, because you can't force people to, you know, to change, to change the way they think. The only person that I can change is me, you know, so, and the lessons that I learned uh, were very hard because I am a stubborn person, <laughs> which, you know, has helped me in many ways. I came in the scene uh, many years, a few years ago, when I was uh, I was introduced here by uh, the late uh, Nathan McGilvery. He said, you know, the late Nathan McGilvery was all involved in the treaty relations. Scene. And at that time, uh, I guess uh, Dennis Whitebird was involved as a treaty commissioner. But uh, he said, you be better, um, you better get involved in here because you know a little bit about the treaties. And uh, so I became involved with the, with the elders there, and uh, I've learned so much from from those people. They become sort of my family, eh? and they, and they, you know, although we speak different languages, they all say the same thing, you know, about about the treaties and, and the promises and all that. Eh? And they've all experienced the same things, whether they're Dini, Dini, Creed, Ojibwe, or Sioux. We all experience the same thing. So to, to us, what we're trying to do is uh, try and bring out uh, the spirit and intent of the treaties and to make sure that they're carried on and at least talked about. Or, uh, but what we want to do is actually try and get people to get into the implementation of those treaties so that they will be more, uh, more beneficial to both sides. It's not that we want to chase the people away and, and reclaim the, the, all, 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 all our land back, but we want to you know, allow people to live in peace and harmony and also to take care of one another, you know, our, our physical well-being, our mental well-being, and our spiritual well-being. And that's, that's, uh, that's what I, I've learned from, uh, from, uh, from all those uh, wise men that I, uh, that I sit around with. You know, I, I learned uh, some of them I passed on to the spirit world. You know, I, I miss those people because they were very instrumental in educating me. You know, I, uh, I, I learned a lot from them. You know, you know the respect, the respect and, and also, uh, you know, to, to, to be able to tell the truth without uh, being afraid that uh, you might be uh, you know, get punished for it, uh, you know. And that's, that's, what, that's what I learned. What, what comes from your, your heart? You know, although you have a lot of stuff in your mind, but what comes from your heart is uh, very important to me. And that's what I, these people have, have taught me. So, so and, uh, and I hope that uh, we can carry on this uh, treaty relations a little bit further to make it, make it work not only for the indigenous people and on the treaty, treaty, all the treaty, the treaties from one to eleven, with with the uh, with the government, the federal government, and also with the, the provincial provincial government, because the provincial government doesn't seem to have any respect for the, for our treaties. You know? So, but anyway, if we could be working on it, uh, you know, it can be done. I know uh, water is uh, very soft. But it can it can make a hole in, in granite, so you know by constant uh, I guess uh, uh, peening on it, uh, dripping and dripping. Uh, that that's what we have to do. We have to we have to keep keep repeating what what we're we're, we're saying. Honor our treaties so that we can honor you. The language uh, was very important because uh, we we had to uh, our people had to uh, had to take into consideration what they had. See the sun. The sun is very important. Without the sun, nothing lives. You know. And and, and the water. Without the water, nothing lives. And then the plant life, eh, the the grass and all that. 
and they included those in the treaties. So for our people to say that our people didn't know what they were talking about, they, they, knew, they knew exactly what they were talking about. But the way it was interpreted in, in the English language is something else, uh, you know, and again, uh, Irish people didn't speak the English language, it was interpreted by interpreters. So, you know, and the Dani people, uh, the Ojibwe, yeah, and, well, I, I don't like to call them Oji Kree, I, I, they're, they're, um, I like to call them Nagawe. That, that, that's what they are, Nagawe and, uh, and, and the Sodo, and, you know, uh, I think there's uh, also black people in that in that area, in that area somewhere in, in the west, uh, in Alberta, and uh, so those, those languages had to be involved in. Uh, but they all say the same thing, you know, you know, and that's uh, to, to honor and and, and respect the, the words that were spoken by the people who who made who made those on behalf. Behalf of, of the crown yeah? and, and, our, and our people, because our witnesses, the witnesses that they have there are no longer here, but we still have our witnesses. Yeah? We still have the sun, we still have the water, and we still have the, the, the plant life. Yeah? Those, are, those are our witnesses. So when you come to the language, however you interpret it, uh, you know, it, it's very strong. And that's why we say, we need to live up to the spirit and intent of our treaties. And when you say spirit, that means that the light, the light that the, the, all, all of creation has light in it. You know, the plant life, the animals, you know, even the water. You know, and without that light, not, nothing exists. So although People signed signed uh, in a piece of paper a signature. You know that signature can be wiped out. You know you can't wipe out the sun. You can't wipe out the water. You can't wipe out the plant. You know, so those those uh, those uh, I guess those those signs or signatures that our ancestors used are, are very powerful. You know, they're very powerful uh, things that they use as a as a witness, eh? as witnesses to the to the treaties and and, and, and agreements that were made on, on on our behalf. Ceremonies are something that uh, you need to be reminded of. Eh? You in, you need to be reminded that it was done in an honorable way. And uh, to me, a ceremony is something that, you know, we, we did this, now we, we have to keep doing it. Eh? We, have, we, have, we, have, we have to renew, we renew that, uh, you know, like, for instance, uh, in the morning, uh, you get up in the morning and, and you do your, uh, your, your uh, you say, well, they said, uh, in our language, they said, eh? in, in, in the English language, they say, we say a prayer, eh? It is a similar thing, and uh, same thing again. Uh, when when you give thanks for you know whatever whatever you do, uh, when when you when you have something to eat, you give thanks, you know, and then before you you, you go to bed, you you, you it's just to take care of uh, you know to remind us of what what we need to do or what we did, you know, and to me that, that that's you know because we we need to be reminded. We forget, we forget things. Eh? And to me, ceremonies are a way of reminding us that this is, this, is what, this is what it was done to remind us of what we need to do. That to me is, uh, you know, the ceremony, eh? ceremonies. I, 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 you know, people ask me to talk about, uh, you know, the, the medicine, but I, I don't know, I have no knowledge of the medicine. All I know is that everybody, everybody is a medicine. Right? That's all I know, because we uh, were supposed to live uh, the, the good life, you know, medicine, you know, the good life, you know, medicine, and it's supposed to be taught by our relatives, our relatives, you know, uh, teach us, teach us these things. 
and and, and that, that is why we, we to me ceremonies are sort of teaching tools to make sure that we do things in in a proper way in a good way i know i know i know which 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 way to 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 point our reps on the pipe and then to uh, to say uh, to say uh, you know gagisimo ne gagisimo in prayer i i know that i know i have to have knowledge i have to acknowledge all of creation you know and and and, and for me that's it's still a ceremony it's a ceremony that i i practice every day to acknowledge uh, the creation of creation and uh, and to give thanks for all the things that are there like you know even even uh, the air that i breathe i give thanks that i am able to breathe <laughs> so but I, i didn't do that when i was a young, a young age was uh, nobody reminded me eh? so those things that uh, we do a ceremony the reminders that we need we need to do these things for for ourselves and you uh, know community as a whole and for the other, other um, I guess, uh, the world to see. And uh, to me, it, it's about, uh, you know, sitting down and, and um, educating people, uh, whether it's uh, in, in a public forum or in a, a radio or, you know, in the media, eh? even on Facebook. You know, with all this technology that we have, you know, why, why, why are, why are we not using that to, to uh, educate the general public and our people about, you know, how important the treaties are, not only to ourselves but to, you know, the people that are that are here and the newcomers, eh? and we're trying to educate the newcomers also that they don't know nothing about treaties, eh? and they don't understand why, why are you talking about treaties? They need to know. They need to know that uh, you know that they're there, and these treaties were, were signed by by our people, our our, our, our ancestors, eh? for us to live in peace and harmony. Because uh, at that at one time everybody was uh, ramp, you know, running around, shooting each other, and not not knowing uh, you know the, the land that they that they, they were on belonged to somebody else. You know that that uh, the territory that they came into, they, they assumed that it was theirs, you know, but it's, it's not. Eh? So, so to me, um, again, it, uh, we need we need we need to we need to be doing the education part on on all on all on all for on all cylinders, whether it's in a newspaper or you know in the media or you know on a tech. The technology that we have, you know, why, why, uh, why, why, why don't we do more of that? So that's my, uh, my, my thinking on it. I was, uh, I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to uh, to meet with so many well-educated people. Uh, you know, that uh, the elders that I meet with in the treaty relations. But uh, they 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 talk about their treaties in their language, uh, you know, and uh, to me it, it's all the same. It's all the same thing. It's about uh, you know living in peace and harmony, and also holding the government account to, to what the, the crown promised, what they were going to do, and you know to to justify them using the you know the land that uh, that they're in, and also for the, the settlers that that are here. You know, I, I heard there's something about uh, today. I was listening to a, a new uh, uh, the television, and uh, they were talking about uh, you know the preparation of our food. And um, you know, I, I used to make this thing uh, called uh, pimiga. Yeah? Pimiga, and uh, it, it's uh, people call it pemigan, <laughs> but it's actually uh, you know it's a uh, smoked uh, meat fish or whatever and uh, and uh, it, it's dried and, and then you sort of beat it up uh, I, I used to as a child I used to uh, my grandmother used to wrap it up in the, in, in, in height and then I'd have to beat up on it make it sort of into a powder and then after that uh, we put uh, 
We didn't use lard, we used uh, the natural stuff. Uh, we used uh, the moose, the fat from the moose, or the fat from the moose. And because uh, we had those uh, in, in, in little bags, and, 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 and we call that pimigan. Eh? Pimigan means, uh, you know, it's made out of uh, tallow or grease or whatever, you know, whether it's moose grease or goose grease or whatever. Uh, but people call it pimigan. Eh? It's not pimigan, it's pimigan. <laughs> You know, it's because it's made out of fat and, and meat. Eh? But I just want to share that with you that, uh, you know, some of these things that are coming out, uh, people have claimed that they, they, it was them that invented that. <laughs> but I'm telling you, they didn't. It, it was us because we, we didn't have no bridges at that time. We had to prepare our food in a way that it would last forever and a long time. Because at times when we traveled, we didn't. Uh, have time to make fires and all that. We, we hate on the run. Yeah? So, so with that, I uh, want to thank you for taking the time out to listen and ask me to talk to you. You know, what is it that I'm going to do? I thought I'm going to have to go to the wall. That's him work. I want you people there to tell your stories and not be afraid of, you know, what, what, what you. You have your own truth, eh? and this is my truth. Nina, Nina, Muntapa, Winogo. And uh, my truth uh, doesn't always agree with other people's truth. So just want to share that with you, everything.